delights you. What is it that gives you delight? According to Merriam-Webster dictionary, delight is something that makes you very happy, something that gives you great pleasure and satisfaction. That's delight. Again, I ask, what is it that delights you? Are you delighted in? Delighted with that chocolate cake? Yes. How about this? Just consider this is vegan patty. So you will have one in the vegetarian restaurant, vegan burger. Are your mouth watering now? How about this? Would this be a delight? Not in peso, but in dollars. How about this, females, ladies? No, you're an this, that's why, no. How about this? Are you delighted in those clothes? Wearing those fashionable clothes? How about this? Sports car. And how about a brand new Fortuner? I've seen my, several of my friends in Lagoon, Yagi. Almost three or four of them already had bought this brand new Fortuner 2016 unit. If I have the money, I think I would buy and I, I, I would buy one. I would love to have one. How about this? A Lamborghini for buy. Brother BS. Would that be a delight? Or how about a brand new cell phone with the latest features? Or probably a lot of you, this is your delight. Taking your picture and going over and over and over again like this. Though a lot of you probably will not accept it, but you're delighted to spend time in this Facebook. Or this, of course I don't have to do it long. How about this? Are you delighted being served the morning boss? Is that a delight? How about this? That's 2012. I'm not updated. Okay. I hope I won't offend you, but I will not look to you when I say this, that somebody told me, have you watched me? Oh, you miss half of your life. Half of your life. That's what the NBA finals. Okay. Or are you delighted in family time? Spending these quality moments with your kids? Hopefully not watching NBA. Or this. Are you delighted to be here this morning? Are you pleased and happy to be here? Or joining these activities, church activities. Is it a delight? I don't hear a yes anymore. Sabbath morning, yes. Other days, Sabbath afternoon, maybe. Or is this your delight to spend quality time with the Lord? Delight to be in the Lord's presence. How many minutes a day? How many hours? Tell me what delights you, and I will tell you who you are or what you are. And be games, money, big boss, houses, cars. Tell me what you are delighted on, and I will tell you what you are. But this morning, our focus will not be about us. Our focus is what would delight God. The title of our study is A Delighted God. Can you imagine how can a human being adapt the universe delight a God who created the entire universe? If the richest man in the world, Bill Gates, would be asked, what would delight you? Do you think giving him a million dollars delight him? 
Bill Gates having probably more than 80 billion US dollars now. In fact, he's been giving out. Would you delight him? How about a Lamborghini sports car? Do you think you give Bill Gates a Lamborghini that would delight him? That would just be an add-on to the innumerable, innumerable num uh, vehicles, part. Probably to give him a spaceship, probably that would delight him going to the moon, but a Lamborghini? But consider for a while, God, who owns everything, who is omnipotent, omnipresent, how would you delight him? Well, if probably you would put anything at all, any point in this cup would please the one holding it, right? But the God of the universe, what is it that would delight God? What does the Bible say delight? God says, God delights in. Let us go through the Bible. Proverbs 11 verse 20. Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord. But the blameless in their ways are his delight. Blameless in their ways. We are blameless. God is delighted with us. According in the scripture. Proverbs 15 verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But... The prayer of the upright is his delight. Even if you turn away from hearing the law, even our prayer is abomination to the Lord. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him, follows righteousness. You want to please God? Follow after righteousness. Proverbs 12, verse 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But those who deal truthfully are his delight. You want to delight God? Deal truthfully. Follow God's way. But our key study this morning is in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. I have intentionally not included in my study verse 23. Although it's a very powerful text. In the glory that you know what Brother Joel has read for us. But let me focus on the verse 24. Verse 24 says, For if this I delight, says the Lord. This time it's not other people who are saying, God is delighted in. But it is the Lord himself who says, For in this I delight, says the Lord. What does the Lord really delight? But let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. A little background there. I first really encountered deeply this text in one of our Sabbath school studies. I was really caught by this text to really study it further. That's why I'm bringing this text to you this morning. Because it's unusual and it's not easy for a mere human being, flesh and blood, to delight the omnipotent God. Let him that glory, glory in this. Glory in Miriam Webster again is defined as something that brings praise or fame to someone or something. Something that is a source of great pride. Let him that glory, glory in this. Do you glory in your position? I'm the president. I'm the boss. I'm the owner. A lot of us glory in our position. How about stuff, possessions? I have this, I have that. You know my friends in Lagoon because one guy bought a fortuner. Let me try it and I buy one too. You know, in one hospital here, Erwin, brother Erwin here knows about this. One doctor had his brand new vehicle delivered where? In the parking of the hospital. Oh, why? And the next few weeks, several was delivered in the place because other doctors, you know, 
if you can afford that too. And in fact, a friend of mine told me when he bought a brand new, you know, car. And a uh, financier, what you call that? Uh, loan financier for the you doctor, would you like your payment to be staggered? No, 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 no. I bought it cash. Why? I would. Would I give the opportunity to you to earn? No, I already paid it in cash. That's not an ordinary vehicle that we bought. But do we glory in what we have? The houses that we build, the cars that we ride on, even the clothes that we wear. How about our achievements? Do we glory in our achievements? I had the most number of awards. I am was awarded this, I was awarded that. We glory in our achievements. Who are we anyway? What are what do those achievements really mean at the foot of the cross? But let him who glories glory in what? That he knows, he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness. Judgment and righteousness in the earth. What do these words really mean? That he understands and knows me. Understand according to Mary of is to achieve a grasp of the nature, significance, or explanation of something. When you're able to explain something you know it through and through, then you understand what it is. And no means to be aware of the truth or factuality of it. Be convinced of certain or certain of. Knowing and understanding are two different things. Is it possible that you know but you don't understand? Yes. A lot of things that we know but we don't understand. We eat and it comes out from our body. But you don't know how it was processed. Right? A lot of things that we know we don't understand. But the Lord says that you understand and know. Because in reality, there are a lot of things that is way beyond us. For the Lord says, For my ways are not your ways, nor are my your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than the earth. So there might be some things, or there are a lot of things that we cannot understand really, but we just have to know. To know that the Lord is good, the Lord is our God. Understanding and knowing then is what Hebrews 11 chapter 1 explains. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's faith. So knowing and understanding is really a definition of faith. That he knows and understands who? That we know and understand me, that I am the Lord. Pharaoh asked Moses, who is the Lord that I should follow him? But we need to understand and know who this God is, that I am the Lord. These are the characteristics of God according to the Christian Bible. First John 4 verse 8, God is love, eternal, omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, merciful, owner of all, and holy. How can we please our holy God? First John 4 verse 8, for God is love. And He wants us to know, to understand, and know is the God now foremost. I am the God. I am the Lord. Exercising. To exercise means the act of bringing into play or realizing in action. Application. I am the Lord exercising. Putting into play. Making it happen. Happen. What? Exercising Loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. Loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. Loving kindness. The word loving kindness is not in the dictionary. It is with a dash. That's why I put a dash in between. It was in the Mayan Webster. 
there's no such word as loving kindness coined together. God is not just loving, and God is not just kind. God is loving kind. That's different from being just kind. Because you can love without being kind. Right? Can you love without being kind? Yes. You must follow what I want because I love you. That's love. But you can't be kind on the other hand without being loving. Right? You can't be kind. Uh, recent election. You see, they were all, all almost all the politicians are saints. Listen to them. They are all kind. And you can see the picture hugging somebody. You have to mention. But God is not just loving. He is not just kind. He is loving kind. That's superlative. Tender and benevolent affection. And God is beyond that. But exercising loving kindness is God. Loving and kind as you define. Job chapter 14 verse 1 seems to disagree. Man is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Full of trouble. Yes. Is this an act of a loving God? Loving, kind God where people are skin and bones? Deprivation? Your heart is sometimes you burn out and see pictures like this. Babies. What have they done to deserve this? Is this an act of a loving and kind God? How about sickness and diseases? Death and suffering is all around us. Is this an act of a loving God? Pain and agony. Have you seen people suffering from bone cancer? I'm sure a lot of doctors here had witnessed the agony of people in pain. People are suffering from loneliness and depression. Is this caused by a loving God? How would you explain this to a friend? Exercising loving kindness, a loving kind God? How are you going to explain this to an atheist? Atheist. I have a friend in Laguna also who is an atheist. How would you explain this to him? He asked me one time, Who do you think killed the most? Satan or God? A question. And if you dare to engage conversation with him, you will not finish. Because right after your exercise, you will still be engaged. Who killed the most? God or Satan? I told him, God, and he is killing more. But if you look at it from a different perspective, he gave his life for these people who are not supposed to die. He did not design us to die. He created us to live forever, to live forever and ever. But by choice, we make a choice. But of course, he doesn't understand that. But how can you explain us to an atheist? Of course, it's good for us because we have the Bible. Psalms 46, verse 1 and 2. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, God is our refuge and strength. So no matter how hard the trials that come your way, God is our refuge and strength. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, true, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. This is the Lord's promise that he can fulfill because he is omnipotent. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So if you are afraid, if you are heavy burdened and laden by all the trials, finances, family trouble, troubles, disease, sickness, our weapon is our knees. Go to your knees because the God we serve is an omnipotent God. 
I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, everlasting life is for all those who will accept Jesus. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Praise the Lord for John 3, 16. And even little children memorize, but we need to understand and know that God is love in spite and despite of what may happen to us. If you are now hard up, expect more trouble to come. If you're burdened, if you're suffering from pain and hardship, expect more because time is short and the enemy is doing all he can to deceive even the very elect. He will not let you go that easy, but we have our refuge and strength. Jesus, hanging on the cross, paid it all already, suffered already beyond what we can suffer. Praise the Lord for Jesus. Exercise in love and kindness. Yes. Because though we do not understand at times why these things happen, but you have to know, if you don't understand, you have to know that He is not a God who will leave us alone. He is exercising active and action. A loving, kind God. Understanding and knowing Him means like what Job says, Job 13 verse 15, Though He slay me, yet I will not praise, praise the Lord. How many of you will be able to say this? A little problem, a little trouble, or we blame the Lord? Though He slay me, yet will I trust Him. And this is another example of faith. They even chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Oh, you who had this God, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And He will deliver us from your hand. They know. They know their God. He will deliver us from your hand, O okay. King. But if He. But if not. Let it be known to you that we know that we don't we don't understand. But if not, let it be known to you, O King, that we do not serve your gods, so nor willingly worship the God of the whom he makes which you have set up. This is understanding and knowing that God is able to serve us, to save us. Praise the Lord. Now benefits of the problem. Are there benefits of problems? Benefits of a problem. When you are burdened with a problem, don't you pray more? Yes. Do you consider what is most important to you when you are so burdened with problems? You know how to prioritize your thoughts if you have problems, right? And we experience the miracles of God if we have problems. If you don't have problems, would you want to meddle with the business of the Lord? But if you have problems, the more you become receptive to see it. Voice. So would you want problems? Anybody here want more problems? There are benefits of problems. In fact, you are in danger if you don't have any problems. You're in danger because you're too comfortable. The enemy must be happy with you. Or you are in the enemy's boat. Exercising loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. We've done with loving kindness. Let's proceed with judgment. How certain is God's final judgment? Anyway, do you suffer now? Do people abuse you, use you, persecute you? So be it. Because the Lord ultimately will be the righteous judge. How certain is judgment? 
Acts 17 verse 31 because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead Jesus the pure judge Second Corinthians 5 verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ all whether on you are on the abusing side or the abused side God will be the judge but everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done whether it be good or bad so anyway all of us will give an account if they're enjoying their sin now let them continue if they wish to because ultimately God will be judged will be, will be judging us how thorough will that judgment be? but I say unto you that every idle word that man shall see they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment so be careful if you're the one on the abusive side because you will not give an account for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Everything at the foot of the cross is level. No boss, no follower, no owner, nor, nor employees. We will all be on the level ground. And the Lord is a righteous judge. He shall judge the world in righteousness. And he shall administer judgment for the peoples in uprightness. Praise the Lord. So don't be bothered if those who are not on the Lord's side now enjoying the benefits of this world. They don't seem to have problems. They have all the money that they need, all the material possessions, and everything. Don't be envious of them. As long as you understand and know the God who we serve. Jeremiah 9 24 says, Let him that glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Are your hearts don't sound to go? Are you longing? Are you getting ready to go home? Some are lost but are not yet prepared. Not preparing to go home. The things of this world still lures you. Are your backs packed and your minds made up to go home, brethren? Are you preparing to go home? Aren't you tired of this world? Do you want to go home? Or the things of this world induces you to linger on a while. Now, Lord, I just bought a brand new fortuner, Lord. At this one or two years, you'll be okay. And then you still have the vehicle. Are the material things in this world luring you to linger a while? Are these the ones you would exchange for heaven? For this? And for this? Or this, or this, or this, or will it be your career's possession? Or this? But as it is written, I have not seen, nor hear, heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who were not. You love God enough that you're willing to delight Him as He described how He will be delighted. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I have not seen or hear heard. Will you exchange those things for this? Yet a lot of you unconscious we do. Are we preparing for heaven to go home? Is your life and your ways a delight before God? We 
quickly tell you at last. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. May each one of us be prepared to hear this.